This is one of the only coolers I've ever worked with that comes with any kind of extra coolant. So there's a little fill port on the radiator. So if things start to get low over time, you can use this to top it up. These are extra long screws for mounting the fans onto the radiator. And there's also some screws in there to get the actual radiator attached to the case. This bag has the mounting hardware to get the actual CPU block onto the socket. So there's stuff in there for both Intel and AMD sockets. There's a lot of compatibility here. And then we've got this little tube of thermal paste in here because it does not come pre-applied. You're going to have to do that yourself. Looks like there's enough in there for two applications. These are Be Quiet's Lightwings fans. They've got the continuous LED light strip all the way around the circumference of the fan there. And man, are these nice looking fans. Like they got some weight to them. They feel really well made. There's rubber grommets on all of the screw connectors where you're gonna mount it to the radiator to reduce vibration. And I don't see any wobble when I spin it or anything like that. It's just really nice, high quality feeling fans here. And the way they connect, they've got PWM cables and also an individual ARGB cable to control that lighting. So this is the ARGB PWM hub, and there's a bunch of connectors running on both sides of this thing and also on one of the ends, actually. So you've got alternating ARGB PWM, ARGB PWM, and that happens on both sides. And there's a couple PWM connectors on the end, and the one that's marked RPM is going to take the RPM signal of whatever you plugged into it and pass that down to the motherboard fan header. And the hub provides all the power and control to the entire AIO. So you've got a standard SATA power connector on there, a PWM connector, and then a three pin ARGB connector as well. This is just some double sided tape and some screws so you can get the hub mounted to your case. So here's the CPU block and you know what? It's really nice looking in my opinion. I like the shape of it. I like how it's got that silver brushed aluminum look with the black Be Quiet logo. It looks really nice. And then you got that LED light bar around there as well. That's going to be controllable. And I don't feel any loose parts or you know anything making any weird sounds or something like that. So I think it's really well made. Nice looking radiator here too. Doesn't look like there's any damaged fins out of the box on my copy. We got that Pure Loop 2FX logo on the side. It's black and white and stands out. The whole thing just looks really good and feels nice. Once again, really well made. Not surprised. Be Quiet usually does a pretty good job with build quality on their stuff and this is no exception. This is the pump section, which is actually kind of integrated into the hoses as opposed to being built into the uh, CPU block like we're used to seeing on so many AIOs these days. Nice, smooth, and shiny CPU cold plate down here. Perfect for making contact with that IHS and getting that heat transfer going. Notice it doesn't have any thermal paste though, like I mentioned before. Um, there is some thermal paste included with the package that you're gonna have to apply yourself. This is the instruction manual that came with it. So it's good for the 360, 280, and 240 models. And it basically just has some colorful pictures in there, step-by-step -step instructions to get you set up and running with the AIO. Now, if you're installing on Intel, which is what I'm going to be doing here, you're going to need to get into this backplate and get it installed on your motherboard. Now, notice there's two different notches here. The outer notch is for LGA 1700, and then the inner more notch is for 1200, 1150, 1151, 1155. The way you set this thing up is you put these pins through there in the right slot. These are just like some little screws, and then they come with this little O-ring that sort of fits on top and holds it in place and that's basically it so we just got to go all the way around this bracket and get our pins installed put those o-rings on there and then we'll be ready to stick it on the back of the motherboard and move on to the next step there's a little notch on the back plate here that happens to line up with one of the rivets on the socket that's back here so i'm just going to line that up and drop it into place Next, I'm gonna get these four spacer nuts installed. Now, these are threaded on both ends, but one end has a cross tip so that you can torque it down with a cross tip screwdriver if you wanted to do that. So all I'm gonna do is go around the motherboard or around the socket here where we have those posts sticking through from the back plate, and I'm just gonna thread these things on here by hand, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. There's a couple different packages of these mounting bridges that come with the cooler. So this one's for Intel 1700, which is your Alder Lake CPUs or your 12th gen, if you will. And then you've got these other ones here for Intel 11 5X. Now they just come with a couple screws to get them mounted and this is what they look like. Installation of these things is pretty easy. All you gotta do is line it up with those spacers that we installed earlier and then get out a cross tip screwdriver and screw them down. There's two screws per bridge for a total of four and that's it, you're good to go. Quick note if you're installing on AMD, these bridges look a little bit different, but the installation's almost exactly the same where you just throw some spacers on there and then torque these down with four screws. 
We got to get the fans installed on the radiator and this is super simple actually. All you got to do is line them up and then screw them down with four screws each and they're extra long screws that come in the package for this and you can't miss them really. Really simple. Just make sure you know where your wires are going so that they don't end up hanging down in front of your build and Be Quiet recommends installing in a push configuration, not a pull. So sorry anybody that's like, oh my God, I need a pull so that dust doesn't build up in there. You know, it's totally not necessary in my opinion. There's nothing wrong with push. I always use that configuration and also if you were to install them in the pull configuration, you wouldn't see any of that ARGB lighting. So that would kind of defeat the purpose as well. I'm installing my cooler into a Silent Base 802 from Be Quiet, and that case has this super convenient AIO mounting tray that I can pull out, mount the radiator, and then just kind of slide it back in and affix it with two screws. Very easy installation process. But if your case doesn't have this, I wouldn't worry too much. The only difference is you're gonna basically do this step that I'm doing here. You're gonna take your screws and mount your radiator directly to your case instead. It's the same process, just you're working in your case, whereas I'm doing it on the outside on this little tray. Now for anybody that's using one of these trays, all you have to do is line it up with the rails in your case, which is at the top for me, and just slide it in. And there's two screws for me, one on either side that I'm just gonna tighten down, and that's it, my radiator's in the case. Now we gotta bust out that thermal paste that came with it and apply it to the top of our CPU IHS. So I'm gonna use the grain of rice method here and it's just like it sounds. You're gonna put a small little bit right in the middle that's about the size of a grain of rice and that's it. We're gonna use the pressure from our cooler installation to spread that out evenly. Now, because we need it to spread out evenly, it's gonna be important that when we're tightening this down, we're alternating between the two screws. Do a little bit on one, a little bit on the other, and keep going back and forth until they're tightened all the way down so that you get nice, even pressure on there and a good spread on that thermal paste. Now we gotta get everything plugged in and configured and ready to go. So this is the ARGB PWM hub that we were talking about during the unboxing. You can mount this thing in a two and a half inch drive bay with the screw holes that are down there. And it also comes with this two way tape that you can stick on the back and then fix it to some part of your case or something like that to get it out of the way. The first thing I'm doing here is getting all my fans set up. So the first port on the side here is ARGB. So I'm plugging in that three pin cable there. And this next one that I have in my hand is PWM power. So that one goes in next to it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for that second fan that's on the radiator. We're gonna go ARGB and then the PWM power cable next to it. This is another three pin ARGB cable and that one's coming directly from the CPU block. So I'm just gonna plug that into one of the open ARGB ports on the other side and this is what it looks like with everything plugged in. Now I'm gonna take that SATA power cable that's connected to the hub and I'm gonna plug it into just a regular SATA power connector from my power supply. Same thing that you'd plug into a hard drive or a solid state drive. This is the PWM connector that comes from the hub on the back of the case. I'm plugging it into CPU OPT, and then I'm taking the PWM connector from the pump and plugging it in just below that in CPU fan. Now we have to locate our ARGB header. For me, it's just under my SATA ports, and I'm gonna take the three pin connector that comes from the hub and just plug it right in there. At this point, everything's fully installed and ready to go. All you gotta do is hit that power button and watch this thing come to life. Look at that RGB lighting. It is so bright and so colorful. They did such a good job on this. I think this cooler looks absolutely amazing. If you're an RGB system builder, you're gonna absolutely love this thing. Since we plugged everything into that ARGB header on the board, that's how we're gonna have to control the lighting on here. It's all done through your motherboard software, so that might be a little bit different for everybody depending on what make and model of board you're using, whether it's ASUS, MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, whatever. They all have a little bit different software suites and applications, so you can go in there and mess around and see what kind of effects and colors you can come up with that way. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And if this was the first time you ever installed your AIO by following this, then congratulations. Leave us a comment to tell everybody about that experience and whether or not you would do it again. Hopefully you will. Give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you later.